In today's lesson, we're going to discuss connecting them with their people. Innate in the human culture is the desire to belong. Whether we want to belong to our families, our heritage, our country, or some other group, the desire is very strong and appealing. And in sales, when you create an image of a particular brand, the people who end up buying that comprise of a status group of peers with like-minded values. This can be very attractive to people who seek always to establish a connection that affirms their own identities. In social networking, the number of reasons people are engaged on these uh, different places is their desire to express their identity. Part of that is joining groups of like-minded people, frequent, frequenting places that these people go, and even buying the same things these people buy. So even though the action may be uh, instigated by their own identity, the final strong desire is the need to belong. So what's the strategic plan here? If you understand this basic need to belong and you know what products your visitors are buying, you can easily provide the solutions for that need by highlighting all qualities that take into account that particular group's identity. In addition, once you understand which demographic your potential, potential buyer belongs to, you also know by association which other products and services would appeal to them. So you can increase your sales just with this one insight and by facilitating the ability for people to identify with their preferred groups. And once you have a large grouping of people or products with brands that reflect a certain set of people's values or aspirations, then this will draw even more people to the offer who are completely invested in belonging to that particular group. So you do need to research uh, the demographics of your visitors. If you're already in business, you'll have a good idea what sort of values and services they're buying into. This will give you an idea of the type of grouping that might be, you know, the people that wish to identify with. Of course, just because one belongs to a particular group because of a, you know, personal demographic, it doesn't necessarily mean that the group they want to be associated with uh, when buying. It just gives you a starting point. For instance, in the 2008 United States elections, the Democratic Party was always associated with equal opportunity. They had several candidates running for the party's nomination, from a black man to a woman. The Republicans were seen as, you know, less for equal opportunity, you know, until they put a woman on the ticket for their vice president candidate. If this were a sale and the product is the presidency, what they're doing is trying to get the swing voters independents and Democrats to identify more with their party through adding a female as a statement on equal opportunity. They know that the demographic of swing voters are mostly white, older women who are not happy with, say, Hillary Clinton not being on the Democratic ticket at the time. So even though that's the demographic, they included a young white woman to the description of the ticket to stir up excitement for the Republican ticket not just from older white women, but from younger voters too. Similarly, luxury products may be primarily aimed at wealthy buyers, but there is a whole class of people who would like to be associated with the affluent, whether they have the budget for it or not. So the starting point is the demographic of people who are considered affluent, since they need to be connected to their status group. However, in advertising and marketing, you also have to make it easier for those that want to identify with a group, but lack a key demographic trait to make the switch to. You can do this either by branding a line of products with the potential to increase your association uh, as your circumstances change, or by clearly defining the value and qualities of that product with the people who buy it. Then you continue to cultivate that connection by offering other products and services that those people associate with, the grouping of people that they desire to be a part of. So what are the psychological triggers here? There's a number of reasons this strategy is so effective. The most obvious is the natural desire to be accepted as part of a group to increase your chances of prospecting, both socially and financially. 
When times are really tough, that's when people gather together into like-minded groups for the sake of survival. That's what the basic family unit is about. And the dynamic lasts until the day we take our last breath. A person without friends is a person who more than likely feels worthless. And a person with many friends who affirm their identity is very blessed indeed. There are even scientific studies that show that our ability to heal and the joy we have in our lives is directly related to how many social interactions we maintain. People with a wide circle of friends, connections from church, family, and even professional organizations can withstand the low periods in life much better than those without this type of emotional support in their lives. So when someone feels they are identified with a particular group and are accepted within it, it builds their confidence, their self-esteem, and increases their joy in life. Some medical studies even suggest it boosts their immune systems. Who knows? All of these things are felt emotionally as a very huge degree of satisfaction, and it's the feeling that is what pulls in prospects when you use this strategy. It makes them feel affirmed, connected, confident, and worthy to be included in the group of buyers who can achieve to own that particular thing you've associated with the status group. Then there are, you know, the interesting dynamics of camouflage that exists in nature and the human species. When you don't have what it takes to actually belong to a particular group, like a chameleon that wants to be part of a particular environment, but really just a lizard, right? Then the next best thing is to fake it to fool people into believing you actually are a twig, a leaf, or a high status achiever. Even if you don't really belong to that group, the fact that you are identifying with it confers on you the same privileges and status and sometimes connections, which the others who do truly belong to it, they actually do get. That can heftily increase the probability of enhancing and later confirming an image of success. It's kind of BS. Well, it's not kind of BS. It's huge BS. But let's talk about uh, how to uh, implement this effectively. The key to implementing this strategy in a way that wows your customer is to treat them as if they already belong to the group they desire to be a part of. If they aren't particularly wealthy, but they are looking to buy a luxury car from you, then being treated as such will help to build the desire to make that purchase from you um, and they'll feel like they really belong to that group. Another way to do this is, you know, when somebody buys a brand that is associated with a particular group, like greenies who like conservation and saving rainforests, etc., then you have a very good idea of what else they'd like. You should suggest those items to them, and in fact, you can do it even before the sale is finalized. You suggest products that complement the sale, or you can even show how some of the other products you sell also go towards, say, for instance, saving rainforests. You can even ask them to upgrade to, you know, be more ecological conscious. Let's face it, we tend to like to join cliques of people who can uh, agree with most of our values, even if we don't really have the credentials to belong. Like a person who goes in into buy a luxury car without enough money to finance a purchase, they don't want to be called out for being somewhere they don't belong. Instead, they want to be accepted for the part so much that they will sometimes even make the sale to prove they belong and can work the part. You can implement this strategy when you decide to create lists of people to market specific products or brands. You can have different mailings go to different groupings, each one stating how a new product or service you are offering you know, will help them to identify more with their status group. A very powerful technique you know, to then implement is peer pressure suggest that other people who bought a particular item also found, uh, you know, that they desired other items. You can even purchase marketing lists from people if you want to include direct mail in the campaign that help you target really specific groups and cross-reference them with other lists or groupings too. One can't really leave this conversation without mentioning how social networking has become the cornerstone of this strategy. 
Social networking sites like Facebook, blah, 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 all the rest of them are set up to neatly get people joined into a circle of friends with similar interests. As you start establishing profiles on these sites, you begin to notice that some friends all use the same applications or enjoy putting similar items in their profiles. This gives you a great insight into the type of items that they might purchase if given the chance. While you can't solicit people necessarily, effectively, you can create links on your profile to offer, you know, that target uh, to help these kind of folks, you, these friends of yours maybe, to find a product or service that is being uh, branded for their interests. You can also set up different groups and there you can solicit and market people more than on individual profiles. Social ads and Facebook are a very finely tuned way to market specific demographics of people and connect them with the offers that help them identify with their people. If you can offer your customers something that allows them to flaunt their peer status, this can also help you finalize the offer. This is how education, such as degrees and certificates, are sold. People want to connect with other people who have similar interests and learn and grow more through them. But when it comes time to use it, they want that sheepskin so they can tell everyone that they are an accomplished member of a specific and special group. And they now have the credentials to prove it. So if you're selling items like workshops or online courses, it helps to give out certificates and accomplishments that people can display to others. Online, you can even make up virtual badges and awards that people can post on their electronic profiles or web pages that show they have become a you know member of a prestigious group, even if the only qualification is to simply buy a product from you. Then you can amp that marketing strategy even more by providing a link back to your product, services, or website from a virtual award or badge. This generates you know, more traffic for you and more chances to sell based on this strategy, since it will attract just the sort of people that this appeals to. So let's talk about timing this strategy. Since this strategy works through the power of image, you can use it practically anywhere in the sales cycle. You can sell pre-sales by the use of badges or sending specific notices to potential demographics and telling them the reason they were singled out is because they belong to your list. Maybe you were looking for engineers, nurses, or greenies. It doesn't really matter. They'll, they'll be flattered to be recognized for being a part of that particular social identity and will give you, uh, give you and your offer serious thought. You can use it on the sales page in your list of benefits. You can use it as an introductory offer to special people who meet certain criteria. You can offer it as part of the incentive to join your special forums and groups. To meet up with like-minded folks, then you can market those groups quite easily for specific products and services that enhance that image. You can set up profiles on social networking sites and create articles that highlight your own associations with a particular group, making you an expert within that group. Once you create a circle of friends who are totally in line with that social peer group, you can start to bridge them to your website or to an intermediary blog where you can actually market them. Finally, don't forget that you can add suggestions and emails on on the order form or even in the thank you page after the order is filled out. This strategy is so powerful that the more you use it, the more buyers actually like it. They never get tired of it because it affirms their personal identity. So unlike other strategies that need specific timing and locations, this one is one that can be used anywhere and anytime with astounding results. That concludes this video. We'll see you on the next.